Hello everyone and welcome to episode 6. Is it 6? I think it's episode 6 of my interloper survival guide where I take you from the start of a run into the late game. I'm trying to explain my thought process as much as possible. And we are stranded in this cave right now in the Milton Basin and it is just eating up our coal unfortunately because we need it. We need to stay warm. So here we go. We're just reading right now. So we're going to put an hour up. We've got an hour on the fire. We're gonna do water. Do a quick read. We're reading this fire starting book right now. And I can't imagine it lasting much longer. It's been going on for half a day now. But for now, I don't want to burn any more coal. I really don't. So what I think we're gonna do is, yeah, I'm gonna put one more coal on. But what we're gonna do is, we're gonna go venture out into the blizzard right now. Grab the flare just in case a wolf shows up. And we're gonna see if we can grab any any sticks out here. Just in the local vicinity. Thought I heard a wolf. Can't tell if I'm hearing wolf feet or if it's just the noise of the blizzard. Um wolves will not spawn in blizzards, but since we came in here, uh, they will not despawn when the blizzard starts, unless uh, if they're close by. So if the wolf spawn when we approach the cave. I'll still be there now, so that's what, something that we got to watch out for. Well, here's some sticks. We can maintain our fire a little bit. Same with the moose. The moose could be over there too. we got to really watch it. I'm not going to venture too far out because what we don't want to do is get turned around and lost. Because that would suck. Probably gonna break a couple of these branches down. They break pretty quickly. Um, we're crouching so that nothing can sense us unless it comes super close. I'm gonna do a quick break of a stick. We'll take a little bit of damage, it's absolutely fine. It's just like when we travel during a blizzard. No harm done. Oh, it's just like when we're traveling in general, I should say. We always take that bit of cold damage per day. It is almost noon and we're not taking any damage, so it's absolutely fine. We don't want the fire to go out, so let's head back. Before it dies, we should have got, let's see, 19 sticks is going to take us, uh, keep us going for a good few hours, so that was totally worth it. Warming up again. And we can break down this torch too for an extra stick. Did the fire go out? Oh my god, for a second there. I thought the fire had gone out. Okay, back to reading, I guess. Let's eat. Let's fill the tank a little bit because we have downtime and cattails take forever to eat. Sounds like it might be stopping. It takes a moment for the temps to go back up, so let's do one more hour here anyway. We've almost finished this fire starting book, so we'll be able to get rid of it soon. Sounds like it's stopped, and it is time for us to hit the road. So let's get rid of a bunch of these. We have way too many now. But my future self will be happy when he drops by this cave and he doesn't have to make fire just to make water. Once we get the good clothing, we can stop off at caves and warm up without a fire, right? Just with the power of the cave and the clothes combined. Let's make a very quick note about the basin cave here. So we're gonna say, again, we don't have the pages available just yet because it's so early in the run, but we're gonna say, Mountain Town, Basin Cave, we have a birch sapling. You never know when you might need it. We're underweight, so let's just hit the road. I'm not even gonna think about my inventory until we're overweight. I'm coming out of here to get to the muskeg, we're gonna go straight left, across the ice. Uh, stuff, there's stuff over there we could loot. We're not going to bother with it just yet. It's not much. It's just a minor loot spot. Instead, we're going to follow the edge here and just grab cattails. Because we like cattails. We all like cattails. Who doesn't, eh? 
How are we doing on Tinder? Let's always keep an eye on that. We've got three, four. So we can grab one Tinder from the next cattail as well. Try and carry five at a time. Super warm right now, and it's actually super late, and we barely burn any energy. You can see it's we're past halfway through the day, and yet we're not halfway through our energy. That's because we've been sitting around at that fire all day waiting for the blizzard to pass. So, lazy Will is gonna get some sprinting in now. No harm done. We still tap sprinting to reduce the energy drain because it just means we can do even more sprinting. And we did not get a single cattail over here, sadly. How heavy are we? 32. If we was like 30 or below, my rule of thumb now is if I can if, if I pass a rabbit and I have a fire going in the early game, there and I'm light enough to carry the rabbit without any without being over encumbered, then I just grab it because it's free food and it's like the next time we have a fire, it's something we can cook, something we can harvest, something we can do in any downtime we might have. But most of the time, we're gonna be too heavy for it. And if you don't have a fire a torch with you, I currently have a lit torch. It's probably not perfect because it's going to attract all the wolves. That's going to be problematic without a fire. You're going to end up wasting a match just to carry a rabbit. And we do have food, so it's fine. It's just rabbits are renewable, whereas our cattails and stuff are not so much. Technically, technically you can get cattails beachcombing, but it takes a long time to build up a decent amount. So we're going to skip the rabbits. Should keep our eyes open for ptarmigans, because on this run I'm pretty sure we didn't get any ptarmigan feathers yet, did we? No. Get rid of those torches. One of them was dead and one of them was at 11%. I always drop torches that are below 20. I treat them the same as dead torches. Unless we, unless it's the only one I have, then obviously I'm going to keep it for the time being. And this is the exit. So the cave we went to, just to be clear, I'm going to point with my torch. The top of my torch It's right there. So, the center of the screen right now. All we did is walk around the edge. We could have come straight across. Up around the edge, and what you're looking for is this tree. You want to walk right under it. And eventually you'll hit the low screen. Welcome to the muskeg. First time on this run that we've entered the muskeg. It's super warm right now, which is amazing. And this area is 100% wolf free. Until we go down to the lower area, in this 100% wolf free area, which is Marsh Ridge. This is also a birch back area, so we're going to sweep it real quick. Yeah, there's actually a lot of birch potentially here. There's a little loot spot here as well. Looks like we've got a mending book. Let's see what else we get. Dog food. Nothing in the backpack. And a Polaroid, which is, you know, nice if you want to do some mapping. What was... I just saw something. Hold up. There's a container where the Vista is, apparently. I didn't even know. It's interesting. Okay, so yeah, let's do a little sweep of this area. There's no predators in this area, but there can be a moose. Now, I don't see moose markings, so I think we're safe. Do a full sweep, grab all the sticks, grab all the coal. Yeah, grab all the coal, grab all the birch bark, I mean. And I hear birdies too, crows that is. I guess we have to specify now the difference between the two birds. We can't really say, oh, I hate birds anymore. So two very different things now, since we have ptarmigans in the game. But I hear crows. It's a corpse here, it's gonna give us some feathers, hopefully some loot if we're really lucky. There's a lot of mushrooms up here. In fact, the muskeg in general, this entire region, has tons of mushrooms. If you ever get, for example, parasites and you need a lot of mushroom medicine, mushroom teas, this is the place to do it. This is one place you can come and check. 
or if you play in a mode uh, with no regen where you need a lot of teas to stay warm, definitely come to the most game. You'll come out with so many mushrooms. I hear another set of crows as well. Apparently I can't aim. <laughs> I was like, why is it not showing up? My cursor was not even... My, my crosshair was not even close to the torch. And this is a deer carcass. This deer actually usually has way more meat on it than most deer carcasses. Uh, I'm not going to click it to show you. Because once you click it, it'll decay. Once you've accessed the deer, whether you took meat or not, it starts this decay timer. And we don't need it right now. So we may need it down the line. Let's leave it in. The second I click it to show you how much weight is in it, it's going to be gone within a couple days. That'll stay there forever now, until we actually touch it. So if you don't interact with them, they'll stick around and they'll keep providing feathers for you. Uh, picking up the feathers does not count as an interaction. I'm going to do one more sweep across the middle here. It's hard to make sure you hit every single birch bag in such an open area like this. Sometimes it's worth it, especially when the weather's like this. I have nothing to lose, right? Just time. In fact, speaking of time, we could be sprinting right now. We still haven't burnt too much energy. So I'm one not more sure sprint. I can carry much more. Why not? We save a little bit of time. Cover a little bit more distance today. Now... When we get down to the lower muskeg, the muskeg is a pretty open area with not a lot of shelter. So you don't want to cross it during the night. You want to be in... If, if you're in shelter and it's almost night, don't bother trying to cross. Because if you get caught out in the night and an aurora starts, there's really nowhere to hide from the wolves. you got to like try and get to the edge. You can easily run into a wolf. So to get... I hear ptarmigans. So we're going to grab those in a second. Hopefully if they don't fly away on me. If you, there are super, multiple ways down from here. There's a rope anchor. There's a cave back there with a rope in it. We could put on that rope anchor. It's really not worth it. There's a very easy goat down. There's also a goat down this way where we're going right now. There's also a tunnel. There's a cave you can enter and which is where the rope is. And if you come out the other side, it'll take you down to the lower level. And we're going to take that route. It's the longest route, but it has coal. So the more coal we can get, the better, especially since we spent so much in the Milton Basin. Before we go in, we're going to take a right here because I heard ptarmigans and I know there's a ptarmigan spawn over here. Now, the ptarmigans are not like rabbits. If I hit one with a stone and I manage to get it, or if I miss, the remaining birds are going to fly away. Which means in the early game with a stone, you can only get one at a time because when I hunt one of these, the rest are going to fly up. That means if we need multiple ptarmigans, we have to wait until we see another flock. And so on. We're sneaking right now to get nice and close, and we're gonna drop the lit torch. Fact. Too much stuff to carry. We need torches, so oh, fire's gonna blow. Most likely, we're not gonna be able to save this fire. Let's try and get in. Yeah, there it goes. Okay, so we lost the fire. That's fine. Uh, it was a free fire anyway. It was the one from yesterday that we kept going all night. Eat a cattail here just so we don't get hungry. But yeah, we can only get one time again at a time. Once you get the bow, killing a bow, a time again with the bow will not scare the others as long as you hit them. And they're harder to hit than the rabbits because they're smaller, but they also stand still for a really long time. So we're going to be really patient here and wait for this one to walk. Because we don't want to catch him just when he's about to start walking. That would be really unlucky, but it can happen. Look how long they stop for. So yeah, we're just going to be patient here. Sometimes hunting requires patience. Is this one ever going to move? <laughs> I wasn't joking when I said they stopped for a long time. Okay, there he goes. So let's wait for him. And yeah, when they fly away, they don't come back for a while. So we're going to go with him and just wait, 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 wait. Okay, he stopped. And I might miss. It's going to be a little embarrassing, but it happens. Okay, and we can get him. Sorry, buddy. Let's see how the rest flew away. Um, can't even, yeah, there they are. See, no chance. No chance of getting two of them. It ain't gonna happen. By the time you snap the neck of one, 
The other's gonna be gone. To leave something behind. This is good. Satanic and feathers are huge. More important than ever. Well, I don't know why I said that. They're new. More important than rabbits and anything like that. The upgraded bedroll is so much better than the bearskin bedroll. We can upgrade our bedroll with Tarmigan Feathers uh, from a 5 degree bedroll to an 8 degree warmth bedroll, which is huge. Now, the bearskin bedroll is a 12 degree bedroll, but the bearskin bedroll is 5 kilos. And just to compare, the regular bedroll is 1 kilo, the upgraded Tarmigan bedroll is 1.1. So it's 100 grams heavier, that's it. It's barely an increase for an extra 3 degrees. If you want to go beyond that and add another 4 degrees on top, you can get the bearskin bedroll, but that's you're suddenly adding another 4 kilos. Excuse me, you're adding another 4 kilos on top, which is a lot. It's a lot in this game. And honestly, it's just not worth it. Even in Interloper, it's unnecessary amounts of warm. You can stay warm in the cave, back of any cave as long as you have good clothing at the time again, bedroll. But it's always an option. If you can do it and stay underweight, then go for it. It's definitely cozy, the bearskin one. It's just not worth it personally, in my opinion. Now, the Tarmigan bedroll and the Bearskin bedroll do seem to decay way quicker than the standard bedroll. That's the only downside. So there's the rope that we could put on that anchor, but that anchor is pretty much useless, so we're going to skip it. But yeah, it's super important, super useful. The Tarmigans, that is. So every time we see them, we're going to grab them. We can also eat them. They don't provide guts or anything. Um, but they do provide their down for the upgraded bedroll. Oh, and the other thing is the insulated vests, right? Uh, the improvised insulation is the official name. It just fills, your next, fills an accessory slot and gives you an extra two degrees of warm and one degree of windproof. It's better than ear wraps, so why not? It takes up the same slot as the ear wraps. It weighs the same, and yet it's double the warmth, double the windproof. You can't go wrong with the improvised insulation. It's light enough for us to see right now. If you're having trouble, you can go quit out and go to the main menu and up your gamma in the settings. Turn your gamma setting up. You can see really well in some of the caves, not all of them. Um, worst case scenario, use your lantern. Or, uh, well, you could always use your lantern and absolute worst case scenario, you can light a torch. If you don't like playing on high gamma, but I don't mind it. This is one of those caves that during the day you can see pretty well. A little bit hard to see the coal, but it's not too bad. You might miss one or two pieces, so we want to go that way eventually to the left. We're going to go back around this loop. We had two ways we could have come. This leads back into that big room. This is the other way we could have come. There is coal in this room, so in order to get it all, we want to check out both possible routes through this cave. The more coal, the better. And we need to eat. Okay, let's just stop. Use a drink. Let's really eat. Let's get it nice and high. Why not? Let's get to like one third of our hunger meter. Should be fine. Cool. There you go, Will. All set, buddy. So much coal and we're so heavy now it doesn't help that we're tired as i've mentioned before once you get below 50 percent energy you start to get a reduction in your max carry weight so the second half of the day you're always going to be heavier than the first half it's just the way it is the only way to never be heavier is either to stay rested completely by doing short sleeps all the time or to never carry more than like 20 kilos of stuff which is just not going to happen let's face it Technically, those are optional playstyles. Personally, I just take the fact, accept the fact that once I'm below 50% energy, I might have a small penalty to my movement. This is the way out. Now, we're going to end this day a little early because there's no real warm spot now until we get close to the forge. And like I said, we don't want to be out there when the sun's going down because, yeah, we could really, uh, we could get caught in a blizzard. It could be pretty bad. 
So, we're not that tired yet though, we're not quite ready to sleep. We've got about 8 hours of sleep in us, um, we want to do 10. So, let's do some activities. We do want to harvest this, but we can harvest this when it's dark. So, let's save that for when it's dark. Let's do some activities that we can do in the light. Now, we don't have the spare cloth to do any repairs. So, we will continue reading our fire book. Which is great because we finished it. And that's actually going to get us to the next skill level, I believe. Let's see. There it is. Fire starting too. We're now a novice of fire starting. So fire starting 2 brings you, let's see, because I don't remember it all off by heart, 55% chance to start fires, so we get a small buff to our base fire starting chance. So you have a base fire starting chance, I think it might be 50 by default, I'm not sure. Uh, it's 55 at level 2, as we can see here. Um, and then you get a bonus on top of that, depending on, Will, that was really loud, depending on which fuel you use. So our base is 55, but let's say with matches, a cattail head and a stick, we get a 20% bonus on top of that, and that's how we get 75. If we used a dead torch, or not a dead torch, but just a torch, it would drop to 55, and so on, right? A fire striker would give us a little bonus. Maglens has a similar to matches. I'm not sure. We can't tell because there's no sun. I forget. Accelerant obviously boosts it significantly. We would have a 100% chance with a stick, and so on. But our base chance has gone up slightly, which means all of our fires now have a slightly higher chance of being successful. Um, and the other thing is fires last 10% longer. So again, this is similar. This is similar to the cold to the cold bonus, except it's visual. So now a stick, instead of giving us like seven minutes or whatever its base chance, whatever its base time is, it'll give us you know seven minutes, 7.7 uh, .7 minutes essentially, an extra 10% on top. And as we level up, this will get higher and higher and higher. I think uh, you get 50% longer at fire starting five. I might be wrong about that. You also get really high chance to successful fire and at fire starting five you also get uh, much faster fire start times i think it's a 50 percent boost so it just lights faster which is always nice anyway we'll cross that bridge when we come to it so yeah we're gonna sleep here for tonight since we have the bedroll we might as well let's continue with these activities though we can drop this fire book now we could use it for burning but i don't really want to carry the extra weight i'm also gonna i only like to carry two books at a time so I think I might leave this sewing primer behind and just make a note of it. Uh, I usually use, okay, so I think, which page do I usually use? Give me one moment here. I can't remember which page I usually use for the musk egg. It's page 10. So we've nearly got page 10, but we don't have it just yet. We've only got up to page nine because we've been, we're on our ninth calendar day. So again, we're gonna have to make notes here for FM just for one more day. FM, Mash Ridge Cave. It's just all temporary, so it doesn't matter how we format it. Mending book. You never know. You never know. You might be like, hey, let's go find the mending book. You never know when you might need it, right? But we've still got time before the sun goes down. I think we've got about two hours of uh, time available to us. Let's read some cooking books. And we might be able to squeeze one more hour in. Let's just try it. Let's make sure we're hydrated enough. Should be fine. It may cancel. Try and get away with it. Yeah, we failed. We tried. I didn't know exactly you what time it was. So let's do this. So we are ready to sleep now, but we did want to harvest that time again, ideally today. So that in the morning we're not worrying about it, we're not carrying the stink. So it's 2 hours and 40 minutes though. I've never you know been what? So hungry in my life. We didn't take much damage today. So let's spend 2 hours and 40 minutes harvesting these feathers. Uh, we might take a bit of exhaustion damage, but it's absolutely fine. We're going to get it back. Why not? We're going to get quite a late sleep. It means we're going to be waking up later in the day. But it's fine. We'll just sprint more tomorrow. It gives us more time to sprint tomorrow, right? I could eat a horse. Oh my god, I almost got hungry. I should have checked my calories first. But that's fine. We're all good. And finally, before we get to sleep, let's take the meat off it too. And for that, we can use the hacksaw since it's faster with the hacksaw. It should be, yeah, 15 minutes is nothing. We're going to do it in two halves though, because that's two cooking skill points rather than one, right? We took the whole kilo, then we'd have to cook the whole kilo as one. And there we go. We actually didn't end up taking any exhaustion damage. So today, we technically could have achieved more things. We could have pushed more and took more damage. 
But there wasn't really much for us to do. We didn't want to be out there during the Aurora or during the night because of the chance of an Aurora, did we? So that's fine. At least we wake up with full health tomorrow. Actually, before we go to sleep, I want to do one more thing. Because we have this meat on us, I want to put it outside in the cold so it decays slowly. Uh, we don't need, I thought we would need a lantern, but I can see the entrance. So it looks like we didn't get an Aurora, but you know, we didn't know that for sure. We didn't know if we was going to get one. Plus, you know, we didn't want to be out there during the night anyway, then we get exhausted while we're crossing the region. It just, just not nice. Okay, but well, we're all set. Let's do this. We're going to sleep for 10 hours. Let's just check our calories, make sure we're not going to go over. We are going to go over, so let's eat a couple more cattails. We don't want to end up waking up hungry and losing our well-fed bonus. We should wake up with a nice strong 105 condition, which is always nice. Technically we didn't because we was a little thirsty at the end of the sleep, but that's fine. I should have drank, but I was laser. Eight days, 19 oh, hours, food. and 12 minutes, and we're in a good situation. We've got good health and lots of resources, so we're absolutely fine. Let's see if we have a Maglens day today. Yeah, we woke up almost at noon. We woke up super late today. It's not a Maglens. It's actually like a post-blizzard. So I'm going to leave the meat, because why carry it when we've not got a lit torch, right? Although... kind of want the can opener. There's a very high chance for a can opener. Are we switching to Maglens? We might be... The weather might be changing to Maglens right now. It's hard to tell. We'll see. We're in a transition period right now. Over here, there's a chance for a can opener, and there's pretty much always wolves. So, we're going to take the meat, because I think we're going to have to light the torch anyway to deal with these wolves. So, let's get it ready, just in case. We only have this one torch. That's kind of scary. Alright, in that case... Let's hope we don't fail this fire. We're gonna spend a match today, it's fine. We can spend matches every once in a while. Like I said, the chances are we're gonna run into wolves crossing the muskeg anyway. Let's do this though, real quick. Let's get that used up fire starting book. Gives us a higher chance to start fire. I think it's gonna be like a 95 or 70... Wait, no. Not 75. 95, I thought so. 95% chance because like we've got a little bit of life left in this torch so if it dies we've just lost a match Hopefully with a 95% chance we don't end up failing, but it does happen every once in a while We've all failed 95% fires Cool, let's use this to make pretty well. Yes, Will. Let's use this to make torches. Oh, and we need to drop stuff here too. Let's not forget I think we have saplings and we certainly have a lot of sticks How heavy are we? We're not that heavy. I'm going to take the extra sticks with me. The reason I'm doing that is it's going to help with getting the forge nice and hot without wasting coal. So, yes, we're going to be heavy. But we're almost at the forge. We're going to reach there very, very soon. So let's just take the sticks with us. 50 sticks is going to be... Or 45 sticks is going to be really helpful to us. So, yeah, let's just go. Do we have that meat with us? Or did I drop it somewhere? So up here, there's a high chance for it. Man, we're always getting hungry, aren't we? There's a high chance for a can opener. It's not guaranteed, but you very, very, very often get it. To the point where I'm usually very surprised if I don't, but it has happened. There's also chances for cattails over there, but if we miss them, it's fine. We'll be back here another time. And we're running because we have so much... Yeah, there he is. We have so much energy today to spare. But yeah, I would leave that meat behind. We didn't really need it. But since we have a fire anyway, we might as well carry the meat. There's no harm done. So we took a left here on the creek. We're going up to this tower. Where there's a nice chance for a can open up for us. There's also a chance for a hacksaw up here. It's always worth checking, especially if you don't have one yet. Yep, the hacksaw is here. We're not gonna, we don't need that right now. Nor do we need these. 
But rather than leaving him in this random spot out of the way, we're gonna take him and move him to a, you know, the next warm spot. Next uh, base location that we pass by. Oh, that scared me. I don't know why I'm so jumpy today. What we're looking for now is a corpse, but we can't open around it. It's not over here, I don't think. Yeah, not today. Apparently he can be further along, so we're gonna check in a second here. You know, I actually forgot to check a certain spot. We also didn't drop that sapling, I totally forgot, but that's fine, we forget stuff. I hear birds. But yeah, there's very, very often a corpse. It can be up near the tower. It can also be in this little area we just checked. And it very, very often has a backpack with a can opener in it. But yep, we're just not getting it today. I didn't get it on my Nogoa run that we're doing um, on Twitch right now, Evo, so that's really unfortunate. I don't know what changed, because it's usually pretty common. So now instead of going, we could have continued down the creek. We're going to go this way instead. We're going to grab all the fuel we can. This is extra fuel. We don't need it all, but it's going to be useful for the forge. It's going to help us save coal. Let's do it. Everybody has their own route across the muskeg, and this one is mine. I'm gonna go down to the water here. There's a little cave up there. It usually just has not nothing much in it, maybe like some logs. So we're gonna skip it, but that's a nice little spot over there. And we're going towards the bear, and we do have meat on us, so we need to make sure we're not going over any like steep hills or narrow or like uh, sharp corners where you could be waiting on the other side. We don't want to get mauled right now. A mauling would not kill us right now, but it will still suck. And the way bear maulings work is they do 90% damage. They do damage to 90%, uh, equal to 90% of your current health. Meaning if you have 100 health, they're going to do 90 damage. If you have 50 health, they're only going to do 45 damage. So technically they can never kill you. But they also cause bleed. So if you're at 10%, they're going to only do 9% damage. But you're going to be bleeding. So that 1% is going to go away before you can even bandage it. So sometimes it, if you're low enough, it's... A guaranteed kill pretty much his cave is just over that over that hill there so instead of going straight over we're gonna go wide here we don't want to get too close to him and we're gonna watch out for weak ice the musk egg has a lot of weak ice so we've got to be really cautious where we cross keep an eye on the screen for the weak ice one in the pop-up make sure you back up if you see it and uh, be prepared to back up at all times if you don't know exactly where the weak ice is going to be if it's a narrow gap you can usually sprint it but just be cautious falling through the ice is instant hypothermia it does some damage there's a little bit of health damage it takes you to freezing level so you're then you're taking like you, then you're already cold you're taking 20 percent damage per in game hour but it also gives you hypothermia instantly and hypothermia is uh changes cold damage from 20 percent per hour to do we even need to switch torches? No, what am I doing? From 20% per hour to 40% per hour. So hypothermia is not good. You don't want hypothermia. You want to avoid that. Which you can. I'm a little nervous about where the bear could be. He's not around, it seems. And we're going over to Poacher's Camp, which is this red train. So that's where the creek is. We just came around this pond. We came down the hill and around the pond. And then the this region has a rail railway track that goes right through the middle. That's what this is. So you want to cross the railway track. The fog's on the other side. So if you hit the railway track, you're heading in the right general direction. Just keeping my eyes open for the bear here. Now he does come all the way over to the train, so be super cautious. Especially since this bear is known for his glitchiness. It's a very glitchy bear. Sometimes he can get you when he really shouldn't be able to get you. He also sometimes moves at ridiculous speeds. I'm sure you've seen the clips out there. It's pretty hilarious. It seems like we're going to be okay though. He also walks like right over 
for the trees there. Now, if we were to take a left on these tracks and follow them, that would take us back to Mystery Lake. Uh, the way that, where that tunnel was, where we was checking for the toolkit in the last episode. So that's... That would have been a much quicker route, but we went around to get the extra coal and stuff. Ended up caught in a blizzard, but it would have happened anyway if we went a different way. So there's usually some items out the back here. We got some coal, we got some food. Sometimes there's some containers, but not this time. And Poacher's Camp has a, uh, a low chance to spawn matches. It can also have a lantern, it can have a hacksaw. It can have a thin wool sweater or another sweater or jacket. It can have, it, ha it always has a few pieces of coal, a few pieces of scrap. So Poacher's Camp, actually a really decent loot, stop, uh, loot spot, especially since it's literally just a train carriage. Blair is always here as well. Some tinder, some more cloth, that's nice. A wire. And a scrawled message. So this is a cache. I'll show you where this cache is eventually if you don't already know it. Now, let's see. I did want to drop some stuff. So tinder, we're doing just fine. We don't need this. Let's do a quick scan. See, I don't know if I want to drop stuff. Yeah, this can go. Oh yeah, the, the fuses and the wire. We don't need to be carrying and those are used for the signal void quest. Wires can also be used for fishing lures. We're not worrying about quests or fishing right now. It's way too early in the run. We're not even considering it. Things do not cure here because it's not an indoor location. So we won't leave saplings here. And we've unlocked page 10, which means finally we have a page for Forlorn Muskeg. Alphabetic let Muskeg is the 10th region. So now I can make it nice and neat. And I can say Poacher's Camp. And I can say Wire times 2. Fuse. We also know that up at Ash Ridge Cave, we have a mending book. Finding lots of page that we can actually use. So, other than that, yes, we're going to be heavy. We're very heavy now. Going to the forge is always going to be like this. Carrying meat as well. That's just the way things go. Uh, to keep our notes nice and neat, let's go into our main notes and get rid of the FM stuff now. And eventually we'll get it all updated in our pages. We don't have to worry about uh, messy notes, having everything on one page. And it's so warm right now, so let's keep moving. The little fogger, which makes the muskeg hard to cross. Now, the muskeg is the warmest region in the game. It has amazing weather. Fog is the warmest weather in the game because there's practically no wind. Very, very little wind chill. Negative three right now. Um, the problem is the visibility, right? Because it's quite an open region. Everything kind of looks the same. In heavy fog, I struggle. And blizzards, I struggle. Light fog, I can do it. So this is my system. Coming from here, the poachers camp. I come straight out of the entrance and I look. See that rock formation over there? I head to that rock formation straight ahead. I'm just looking for the bear here, what I think we're safe. And let's run because, yeah. We're finally catching up on energy though, we're about halfway through the day and we're almost happy through our energy. Now this place, I talked about mushrooms before, but this place has so many cattails. If you're thorough, you can get well over 300 cattails from this region. We're not going to be super, super thorough, we're going to grab the ones we see, which will still be a lot, you'll see. Um, but, you know, we have all the time in the world in the late game to grab more. It was low on food. That'd give us more of a reason to be thorough. But yeah, we're not low on food. We're doing absolutely fine. But yeah, just be careful out here if it's heavy fog or blizzard. Because you can't really use the landmarks the same. You have to really know the exact patterns of the ice and the snow, which I don't know very well at all. I definitely get turned around every time when the visibility is bad. But in light fog, you can use these rock formations. Because you only need to be able to see from one rock formation to the next. To make it all the way to Spencer's, which is where the forge is. We're just going to be a heavy boy for now. It, it, it is what it is. Once we're done with forging, we can handle carrying a lot less stuff.
So now that we're in this rock formation, let me just get my bearings once we grab these cattails. We're gonna need to eat soon. We want to go basically towards those rock formations. You can see over there, they kind of look like sloped rocks. Now you want to try and stay away from the ice as best you can, so we're going to take this long way around. But yeah, we're heading over there, where that tree is, that leaning tree. And we don't need to sprint anymore. In fact, we've kind of sprinted too much. I wasn't paying attention. My energy is now lower than it should be for this time of day. But if we switch to walking for a while, we'll be absolutely fine. not really important that we get 10 hours of sleep tonight anyway since we've literally not lost any health the weather's just been too good we've only gained health today got our last torch again drop our meat before we do it whenever you want to stand still not paying attention to your surroundings you want to drop your meat and hopefully we get this i think it's 75 percent chance come on Nice. You want to start, when you're on your All last right. torch, you want to start the fire for your next few torches early, ideally. Let's use sticks because they're our heaviest re uh, fuel resource as far as weight to fire time ratio and weight to warmth ratio. Sticks are completely free, but they are the worst fuel in the game in terms of their weight ratio. Cool, we actually got an extra one out of it, but we don't need five, so we'll leave that one to burn out. They'll get us a free dead torch. And yeah, see where that leaning tree is? We're heading there. We're heading past it to those rocks I pointed out, but same difference. Let's get to like 25%. I'm tired of stopping and eating one cattail at a time. Have some flyover birds. Those are only atmospheric. They have no purpose or function in the game except for just a nice detail. There's a lot of. There used to be a lot of rumors about uh, theories about what those birds meant, what they represented, things like them representing a weather change or all kinds of stuff pointing you to certain things. I've heard all kinds of theories. None of them are true. Um, it's been tested. I tested it myself. Um, Zachnafine tested it and he went as far as contacting the developers since he's in contact with them and they told him yes, the birds are nothing, they're just atmospheric. So I'm glad that Zach finally settled that because I was always in that opinion as well. Like, I wasn't 100% certain but I never found any kind of um, significance for those at all. They're more like annoying than anything, they're very cool, I think it's a nice touch and I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't not want them in the game. But they're kind of annoying sometimes because you think there's a corpse or uh, an animal carcass nearby and there's not. So see those rocks we're pointing at was actually where the hunter's blind is. Um, you just can't see the hunter's blind. It doesn't spawn in until you get a little bit closer, but you can see the rocks. So we're heading towards there. That's a nice little loot spot as well. Again, it's a chance for a, again it's a chance for a hacksaw. And there's always a hacksaw in the muskeg. This region always has a has a hacksaw in, in the low part. It can be in a bunch of different locations, though. It could be at that tower we checked. It could be at that cave after the tower that we didn't check. Um, not inside the cave, but just outside the cave, under a fallen, next to a corpse that's trapped under a fallen tree. It can be at this hunter's blind, and it can be at the forge. I'm trying to remember if it can be anywhere else because I think there's five. If I'm not mistaken. Maybe I'm wrong because I can't think of the other spot. I think this is weak ice. I'm not sure. Let's check it out. I'm a little nervous. I'm almost certain it is. Yeah, so let's back up. It's actually a spawn location. So there's an interloper spawn location that spawns you right here on this island. And you can run straight across the ice and go to the blind and get the matches if the matches are there. There's a high chance for matches at the blind. They seem to be more than 50% chance in my opinion. But they are not guaranteed. And they're invisible. It's a glitch. I don't know if they fixed it with this latest bug fix patch. Um, I don't think they said anything about invisible items. They're not actually invisible. They're actually under the terrain. But 
hitbox is in the right place so you can still pick them up. You have to know about them really because they're easy to miss unless your cursor just happens to float over them. So we'll check it out and see if they're there. They can be matches there, they can be a lamp oil, they can be an accelerant. Uh, can be matches or accelerant, I think maybe lamp oil, I'm not sure. There's a couple of different items that can be there, but if you get the matches, they're hidden under the environment. It's always worth checking because, you know, matches are life out here. Super interesting because the other series I have going on at the moment is me playing on the hardest settings, the hardest custom settings with no regen and stuff like that. And uh, it's actually edited from my Twitch VODs, so I took my Twitch VODs and edited them down so that you don't have to listen to me talking to, starting it. to slow me down. So you don't have to listen to me talking to chat, etc. And uh, it's interesting seeing how much faster we get around the world on this Loper run in comparison with that Nogoa run. It's super interesting. So yeah, the matches could be right here, so if you don't have anything, scan this area with your cursor and you may just, you may just find the matches. Another reading book, it's going to make us even heavier, but we're going to the forge. Uh, we can drop stuff when we get there. So, now that we're at the blind, we want to get basically to that rock or that rock. The choice is yours. I like this one because we can hit a couple loot spots along the way, you'll see. But we're going to go to that one. It's, it's like two rocks pointing at each other can't really tell from this angle but it's like a it forms an arch basically look at that 43 cattails now and that's barely scratching the surface of the number of cattails in this region there are so many mm, remember that on interloper plants are set to high which is the highest they can be set so in all of the vanilla modes from Pilgrim to Interloper, plants are set to high. They're already at the max settings. If you play on custom, you can modify that to have less. You cannot modify it to have more though. Is this weak ice or are we safe? We're safe. So yeah, we're gonna go that way. Two rocks that point at each other. But I wanna grab these cattails first since they're not that far off the beaten track. Muskeg is one of those regions though that's very, very difficult to navigate at first. Um, a way that you can do it, if, if you find this hard to follow, and from the tracks, from the tracks, excuse me, from the tracks where the mystery lake entrance is, you can just follow the edge of the map, which is over, it's that way. You can follow the edge of the map all the way around, and since the forge is on the edge of the map, you'll get to it. But it takes a long time. That's how I did it. I used to do it for the longest time until I learned to navigate the middle. Where am I going? Who's just grabbing the cattails? Wasn't where? Did I see more or am I losing my mind? Do we want to grab these ones? Why not? We've got some energy left in us. I'm sorry for the slow walking. I know it can get a little... Um, I know for me it can be like... I get super impatient with the slow walking. So as somebody watching, I can imagine it's even worse. But until we get to the forge, that's just the way things go. Not mean to drop that. So yeah, to the to the pointed rocks. Let's go. Right where those birds are, actually.
taken so much weight. It's torturous. I've never been so hungry in my life. But you know, they say patience is a virtue. We just have to deal with it for now. Probably get some feathers here. Whenever you hear crows, think feathers. Looks like we just got one on this guy, unfortunately. There is some uh, randomness involved. A little bit of luck involved. I'd better find some water. Very rare that you get zero though, unless you've cleared it recently. Sixty-one cattails. We could live a long time on cattails alone if we really wanted to. Especially if we did starvation strat, which I'm not a fan of. But I like my carry weight. I like the well-fed. But remember, if you prefer the method of trying to stay warm all the time and using starvation to using your health as a resource as far as starvation, then go ahead and do it. I know that's often recommended to new players, and I don't think there's anything wrong with it. For me personally, I like to do it this way. Keep on eating and just push through the cold and sleep off the cold damage rather than sleeping off the hunger damage. It's personal preference. I know I've mentioned it a few times in the series, but I do think repetition is the key to learning as long as it's not too monotonous, right? Um, I'm a little... I got a little confused for a second here. We want to go this way, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to go this way around. There's multiple paths. This is the one I prefer. So we came through the arch, back to the left. We could have just come straight over here, but I guess there can be loot in there. And sometimes I'm just winging it, you know? <laughs> like, I know the way, but, like, I'm used to doing it on autopilot. So it's interesting to see. What we're probably going to do now, since there's not much important to talk about here, I'm probably going to fast forward this section. Maybe. If he doesn't fast forward, then just ignore me. I'll find out in editing if I was right. But yeah, I'm probably just going to fast forward this section. Actually, that's not. Because we've got to talk about the path, don't we? It looks like we're transitioning to the next weather type from light fog to heavy fog. This can be a little frustrating. As I said, it, it can be really disorienting in this region. But because we're so close and we kind of saw where we was going, I should be okay. I think basically if I hug this ice now... I'll get to some man-made structures. And that's a nice landmark. They tell me that I'm almost there, so I think we'll be just fine. Let's stop and eat, though. I can't believe we haven't been harassed by any wolves carrying meat, too. So these are actually the same as cattails, weight ratio-wise. They're the weight of two cattails and the calories of two cattails. So we're going to eat them. Um, sardines are pretty risky when once they're, once they're at 75 or below. So let's eat them now while they're good. Let's get some water in us too. We're actually going to need to make water very soon. We're running out. In fact, we have just run out. To God. If I get lost on the tutorial series, I'm going to be so mad at myself. People will be like, who is this guy? Why is he teaching me? All he does is gets lost. So as far as TLD goes, I have put a lot of hours on TLD and I've done a lot of things with TLD, a lot of challenges and stuff. Um, I'd say my weakest element is not so much my map knowledge, but my ability to visualize a map in 3D. Like, I'm good with landmarks that do get turned around, or sometimes I take longer routes than I should. I'm so used to using the landmarks, you know. But that's fine. We all have our strengths and weaknesses. I'm just going to grab these cattails. Why not? We're heavy anyway. Might as well get heavier. And we're tired too, so... Every second that we get more tired, we're also getting more heavy. But hey, we're almost there, so... 
And close to the forge is also another bunker. And I'm going to show you all the bunker locations. Because just because I got the Pepper's Pie recipe in Mr. B. Lake doesn't mean that you will, right? So it's important that I show you all the possible Pepper's Pie locations. And it also helps if you're playing on custom or another difficulty where those bunkers also have a chance to be stocked, right? I do apologize for spoiler warnings if you're looking for the bunkers yourself. But I mean, you are watching the guide. There are going to be uh, something that you didn't know that you're going to find out if you watch. That's up to you if you want to watch. This is our last torch. Once again, I've left it too long. Yeah, it's always good to start when the torch is not quite run out yet. Just so you have a chance to fail a couple of times, but yeah, I keep forgetting. The weather's so good that I'm not needing to make fires for cold, so I keep running out of torches. So let's just hope the luck is on my side. And it is. That's always nice. I did it. It's always nice to know. And the torch died whilst lighting the fire. Let's get rid of those since they're just heavy version of sticks. They weigh twice the weight of a stick. And they only provide one stick when harvested, so they're pretty much worthless. Especially when with this heavy. Too heavy to carry. Especially when with this heavy, they're not worth carrying, I don't think. Remember, whenever we stop to do anything, we always drop meat. In case there's a wolf coming our way. Just to shake them off. And of course, you can use... The drop decoy button, which on PC is defaulted to uh, the number three key. You can always use that. Yeah, just to quickly drop them without having to go into the menu. So, we made it almost to the forge. The forge is just that way, but once we found these uh, bunk houses, these ruined bunk houses here, we know that we're almost there. There can be items here too, there can be a... Oh, this place can have a hacksaw too, that's the other place that I couldn't think of before. So there can be a hacksaw here. Um, there can also be a lantern. If I don't rest soon, I'm gonna faint. And I just realised, we saw Burdock earlier and we just left it, didn't we? I think we've got to continue to do that. So Burdock can be, can be eaten and can be used for a tea as well. I think it's best to save them, because some recipes use them. Uh, we didn't get the lantern by the way, it can be on those metal... Uh, barrels right there. There's a wolf. And the hacksaw can be, I think it's either here or there. Which we didn't get it this time. Get out of here, wolf. -er. So, yeah, once you've checked out the bunkhouses, just want to walk along this uh, little bridge. Or dock or whatever it's supposed to be right here. It's a little walkway. We're almost to Spencer's homestead, guys. It's been a long walk. It's been almost a full episode walking across this uh, this region. So I do apologize, but this is a real-time tutorial series, right? I try not to cut out much. I try not to speed up much. Only when uh, there's not much to be said or much to be seen. So episode six, I think. Episode six is gonna be a little bit of a little bit of a drag, but hopefully you learn some things. Oh, you scared me. What? It sounds close, but I don't see it. Oh, there he is. Jeez, he was hiding. Obviously, we can't get up to this, but I'm pretty sure it's safe to walk alongside it here. I don't think this is weak ice. Let's find out. We're good. I thought so. So there's quite a few carcasses around that area. And since we have a fire going anyway, I think I'm going to harvest them. Because we're going to need it. So we're going to be spending a couple of days here. We're going to want to eat. And cattails don't last forever. So even though we have so many of them, it's not going to hurt us to pick up some meat here. We're gaining calories, right? The more meat we can eat while we're here, the better. And, you know, meat equals cooking skills, right? Well, here we are. Uh, Spence's farmstead, and 
can see the orchard. It's another farm. Uh, it's not an indoor farm like the one Pleasant Valley, but it is a farm all the same. Let's drop our meats once again. Always drop your meat before you do anything. Boom, boom, boom. And why not? We have a little bit of downtime. We're practically here now. We're on the doorstep of the forge. But we might as well grab some meat while we're here, right? Turned out pretty well. Let's get a little bit of time on the fire. Let's just use wood. We don't need coal because uh, it's super warm out right now. Let's get that ptarmigan meat cooking finally. And it looks like we've got about 14 minutes. We don't need to warm any teas because it's so close to where we're going. Uh, 13 minutes. That's enough time to do. Oh, this is a small one. For a book, this is extremely small. Usually the books have more meat. So yeah, we're going to do... Half kilo at a time. We're gonna exit the menu and drop it each time. So we escape three, and then get the next one. Otherwise, when we're harvesting the second piece, we're already stinking from the first piece. And we're gonna trap the wolves and get jumped while we harvest, which we don't want. But there we have it, and um, we might as well wait for these to finish harvesting. Uh, we can do some birch bark preparation. Yeah, to finish harvesting, to finish cooking. I mean. There we go, and let's just eat the meat right away. Why not? That's the good stuff. We're not gonna bother with the hides. Oops, that's herbal tea. Yeah, we need water. The next fire, we need to make water too. So we've got five torches, but there's still some time left on the fire, so let's empty it. So we're gonna go one, two, three. So now we have our five torches. These ones that are left will die out, and down the line, that's some free sticks for us. So I always try and if I ever leave time on a fire, I always try and turn it into torches. You could take them and turn them all off, but it takes so long. So instead of turning them off, oh, putting them out. Me down. Instead of putting them out, I just pull them, pull another, pull another, pull another, let them burn out. They'll be zero percent, but they're still three sticks, right? And there's another carcass right here. Let's hope this one's a little bigger. Farmstead's right there. Take a little bit of exhaustion damage, but that's absolutely fine. Who cares, right? Should have dropped the meat first, but I didn't. That was a mistake, but that's fine. That's how it goes. Come on. And we well, failed. Like that's fine. It's been a while since we failed the fire. Is this our last tinder? No, we have two left. When you fail the fire, you do lose the tinder. Kind of sucks, but it is what it is. We need to remember to make some very soon. Oh, come on, man. That work? <laughs> the final tinder. Let's see. Why didn't that work, Will? Good question, buddy. Come on. All right. We did it. Got our good. meats. Let's get those cooking right away. Get rid of that, it's low anyway. But this one on, so we got nine minutes. What is wrong with all these carcasses? If you do five, so this is rounded, so this could be like 0 0.58 or something. So you gotta be careful, because if I took five now, and then there was less than one, less than 0 0.1 left, it will disappear as if it never existed. So if you got 0.6, always take the whole 0 0.6, don't take 0 0.5, because 0 0.1 will not be left over. It's kind of annoying, but that's just the way it is. Take the whole 0 0.6 at once. You only lose 0.1, it's not the end of the world, but you know, it's worth knowing about. At least I think that's why it does it. Either that or it's just a bug. Okay, so we just need water, so we're gonna use this fire for water as well. Let's just grab these feathers. Grab this, we can just break it down. While we wait, only takes two minutes. There's another feather. Now, 
let's see. Eight minutes and eighteen minutes. I would drink almost anything about now. I know, Will, I know, but uh, we're gonna make you some right now. I'm not gonna eat that yet, because it might make us thirsty. Let's uh, get some water going. Do another birchy. This episode's been a bit longer than I expected, just because um, we didn't get a save, but that's fine. Might as well continue cooking here, right? And we just got cooking too, which is nice. So let's see what we got from cooking too. So cooking too brings us an extra 10% calories from any cooked food item. So for example, this half a kilo gave us 400 calories. Now if we was to cook half a kilo of venison, we'd get 440 calories. So it's nice. Over time, that adds up, you know. Do we have more birch teas to craft? We're all done there, so... Do we have an extra cloth? We do. We could do a little repair. Like the jeans, for example, which takes 30 minutes. We're probably going to get thirsty because I wasn't paying attention. And we failed anyway. We failed. Oh yeah, we was going to get thirsty, but there's nothing we can do about it. We don't have the water yet, but now we do. Cool. Um, the rest we can make at the forge itself. Water, that is. Just wanted to get some in us now. Let's eat up. Uh, the meat, because we just got it, should have been at 100%. When you cook it, it gains 50%. So it would have gone from 100, but it would have stayed at 100. It can't go up above 100. So we have stayed at 100%. We cooked it up. It stayed at 100%. That means it's entirely safe to eat. If it gets to 75% or below, just like those other food items, it starts to become a chance of food poisoning. But I knew I was safe to eat that right away. Let's get to the farmstead. Now it's really warm. We're actually going to sleep at the forge, but we are going to make a fire. It's not warm enough to sleep at the forge without a fire, because it's not a warm spot. But now I'm going to show you why we brought so much wood to the forge, because you do need coal for the forge. So the way the forge works is it needs to be at 150 degrees for it to even function. So that's at least eight pieces of coal, here. right? It's eight pieces Time of coal. To look for shelter. Coal is 20 degrees a piece, so eight pieces would get you 160. But you can use sticks to get the warmth up first. Now sticks and other wood, anything that's not coal, will only get you as far as 80 degrees. That's the maximum warmth of any fire in the game. The only fire that can go beyond that is a forge, and that requires coal. So what we can do with all those sticks is get it as close to 80 degrees as we can before adding the coal. The problem with that is it'll add so much time to the fire that it might become difficult to add any more. It might not let us add any more because it's already a 12-hour fire, and fires can only go up to 12 hours. Um, but that's fine because we need to sleep anyway. So we're going to get the temp up with sticks, then go to sleep. Just gonna do a little walk around it first, see if there's any scrap for us. Any loot, anything decent. We will do the there is a nice more antibiotics. There is a safe here, we'll do that before we leave, but not yet. Another wire. More coal. Let's see if there's any loot for us. A little tired, but it's fine. Another fire starting book. I That's can barely great. walk with this much gear. A jacket. That's our second jacket. Finally. So we're gonna put this on the outside because on the outside the windproof matters, and the windbreaker definitely is better for the wind. The inside only the warmth matters. Cool story. Cool, cool. Pry bar. Do we have one yet? No, we don't. That's our first pry bar for the room, so that's perfect as well. Yeah, they can appear as random loot in these containers. This we don't need, we don't do guns. Why they still spawn in Loper, I do not know, but it is nice that we can get the skills up. Just finding all kinds of junk in here. That's a dough outside being noisy. Let's grab this wood, I'm gonna use it all for the forge. There's a note here. Let's see if there's anything decent. A cooking book, nice. So yeah, we got all the books we need. Fire books and cooking books are my personal favourites because they're the skills that I really like to max out. Let's go underneath. Oh my god, look how heavy we are, guys. Can't wait to move briskly again. And there's always two kinds of dog food here. On lower settings, there's even more than two. I think there's up to five, depending on the settings. A lot of people think you have to break this crate. That's not the case. They're just behind it. They're always behind it. I used to think the same thing. I see a lot of people still making this mistake. You can also use this for more scrap if you didn't bring enough. We brought more than enough, so we're going to be absolutely fine. Alright, let's get that fire going then, shall we? 
Oh, no tinder. Okay, let's just stand here and make a tinder. Wolves cannot get inside this. It looks like they can, and they'll come right to the entrance. They cannot get inside. As long as you don't stand near the edge, they can't get you. Just be careful standing near the edge. But yeah, we can do whatever we want here. So we're going to make a tinder. Have us the stick. We're 100% safe inside here, even during the aurora. They'll sense you, and they'll come right up to the door. Uh, right up to the, to the side, but they won't be able to get you. I could have burnt that gun book. Come on. Come on. Come on, little fire. Alright, so now we're going to put all the sticks on it. We're going to start with the sticks because they're the heaviest. It's going to take a while for the temp to get up. We put about 40 sticks on there, right? So it should go to about 40 degrees. Um, these are 3 degrees each, so that's about 49. I'm just going to roughly guess it. This should bring us to about a 54 degree fire. So it got us a lot of the way. It did get us a lot of the way. But we still, we want 10 hours so we can sleep. So what we're going to do now is we're going to break some of this stuff. We're going to use the hammer because that speeds it up. 53. We'll try and get it as close to 80 as we can. So that's 56. It doesn't matter if you mess our sleeping pattern up here, because with the forge, you're not moving around. You end up messing your sleeping pattern up anyway at the forge, because you're just standing there doing stuff, doing nothing, basically, for a couple of days. So, eight hours. Let's break this bad boy. This has accelerant inside. Forgot about that. Get us to about 68 degrees. See, we're almost there already. Ooh, that scared me for a second. I don't know why. It was like uh, instant aurora. But yeah, we're safe in here. There are walls around. Oh, look how beautiful it is, guys. I'm not going to be able to carry this yeah, load yeah, for much we longer. Will. We know, Will. We're fine, but uh, you're just tired, bud. So what's that? 71. 74, 77, 8, uh, yeah. So we can't add anything else now. And we can get our 10 hours of sleep, so this is perfect. So that's got us. That's as, high, that is, that's as hot as we're going to get it without throwing coal on it. But yeah, it's ideal, really. We're not quite fully hydrated, but it's enough. Let's do our 10 hours sleep. We don't need to use the bedroll, and we don't need to damage our bedroll by using it. There's a bed right here. Alright, uh, day nine. And that is where we're going to end it for today, because we just got to save, didn't we? We just got to save. I hope I remember to eat at the start of the next one. Thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you liked the video, please like the video. If you really like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Um, there'll be a playlist in the description um, that you can follow for future episodes, or you can check out future episodes when they come around. Well, thank you guys so much. I appreciate you all. Have a good one. Bye-bye.